morning. morning. Welcome to Duck Church. We're glad you're here to worship the Lord with us this morning. Do we have any folks who are on vacation with us or visiting? Thank you all for being here with us. Uh, this is Pentecost Sunday. It's the Sunday where we celebrate that the Holy Spirit has come down and is among us. And it was the day, back in the day of um, the Jews, they would travel to the temple, and it was the day that they would celebrate the harvest. And so today is also a day where we're celebrating the harvest of uh, some of our graduates and their faith and the way that their relationship with God has flourished uh, during their time here at Duck Church. And so we've got a lot to celebrate and a lot of uh, things to worship God for. So let's stand up and we're going to sing. There is a trembling, there is revival, the sound of worship, so great and glorious. Holy Spirit, hear us now, breathe on us, holy faithful, come fill this place with your presence, like a rushing wind.
other name. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We praise you, God, and it's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Take a second and exchange signs of Christian love with one another.
Hey, boys and girls, come on up. We'll have a minute together. You want to? Come on up. Come on up. Yeah. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Can you say Pentecost? Pentecost. Pentecost? That's really good. The Pentecost is special in that Pentecost is the birthday of the church. So you've got a birthday. I've got a birthday. We all celebrate our birthdays, right? Well, Pentecost Sunday is the day that the church really got born because that's the day that the Holy Spirit came to live within the people that loved Jesus. So if you were to spend the night in your garage, would that make you a car? No, it wouldn't, would it? And in the same way, just sitting in the church doesn't make us a Christian. What makes us a Christian is the Spirit of Jesus living inside of us. And that happens when we ask him to. You want to let's pray together and ask Jesus to live inside of us? Lord Jesus, we ask you to come into our hearts. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into our hearts, Lord Jesus. Amen. Uh, would, Would you like a piece of candy? Would you like a piece? There you go. Well done, Miles. Would you like a piece of candy? I'm thinking of the starburst. You're looking for a starburst? I think they're at the bottom. Well, I want to get the starburst too. Are you? They're at the bottom. I see some. Do you see them? There are pink ones and red ones. I love red ones and pink ones. Do you? Do we get two or not? You just get one. Okay. But you're good. You're, yeah. I can't see that. You're good. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Thank you for coming up. Thank you. Yeah. We come now to a a really uh, special time, and it's the time that we want to recognize our seniors. Um, Duck Church has been a a great church for our family for seven years for a lot of reasons. But one of the reasons it's been a great church for our family is because of the really great youth ministry here. Um, Back when this church had a choice about whether to hire an associate minister or some other person, you decided... Uh, and I say you because I wasn't here then, you decided to hire a youth minister because Duck Church wanted to be in ministry to people of that age, to to youth. Duck Church thought that young people, people of that age, uh, sort of between elementary school and high school, were really, really important. And Duck Church has continued to show that in so many ways. We have a full-time youth pastor. Amy, you and all those that work with you do such an amazing job. Will you stand up so we can applaud? (laughs) You know, Amy is so young, and yet she is so wise, and that's a gift of the Holy Spirit. One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is wisdom, and you, uh, you love the Lord so much, and you have wisdom uh, in abundance and also kindness. But this church has been in ministry to youth in really significant ways. Another way, not only by supporting a full-time youth minister, but also through the other programs that we do. The United Methodist Men and all the people that participate in the men's projects fund the scholarships that we give to the youth. We know that the scholarships that we give to the youth are not going to make or break whether they attain college. And that's, that's not our capability or our intention. But what it does say is, we love you guys so much. You are so important and so special to us that we want to make barbecue and sell it. And we want to do fundraisers because we want to just be able to say to you, how much you mean to us, how special you are. So this church 
shows love to young people in the most amazing ways. And I want to thank you for doing that. Uh, now, I, I want you to see the testimony of a couple of our youth, and we're, then we're going to recognize all of our seniors. Hi, I'm Mary Pat Thompson. And I'm Victoria Tyson. And we're seniors at First Fed High School. Well, I can't really remember a part of my life where I haven't been involved in Duck Church. Um, ever since my family moved to the Outer Banks when I was really young, we've been coming to Duck Church. So I feel like I've been raised there. I've been raised by the people who go there and just um, by going at least like once a week for every week for a long time. Like I've, I feel like I've been raised by the church. Okay, so I was lucky enough to have such a welcoming community when we moved here. I think it was about seven years ago. This is actually the longest we have been at any church or that I have lived in one place. So it's been really nice to have such like a warm community and like that support from a church family. And I got involved with service here too. So that really just sort of helped like root me into our church here. So I'm really grateful for that. I'd agree about the service part, especially um, being involved in the youth group, especially being a student leader in the youth group has really helped strengthen our relationship with Jesus. And I also think that um, like singing in the praise band and Victoria does tech, that's helped too, for sure. Thank you all so much for everything you've done for us. Thank you for being such a great church family. We appreciate you so much. Bye, thank you. Bye. All right. <clears throat> Is it on? There we go. Um, we're going to recognize our Duck Church scholarship recipients first. Uh, these scholarships go to students who have been active in our church throughout uh, their lives and really through their high school careers. Um, we like to encourage them and encourage them their relationship with Christ and really to encourage them to continue to live out their relationship with Christ as they go on from this place. Um, so this year our scholarships, I'm going to call out names, so when your name is called, if you'll come on up here. Uh, our scholarships go to Misty Lucas, Samuel Kitchen, Tommy Scott, Sam Wills, Victoria Tyson, and Mary Pat Thompson. Let's give them a hand. All right, all of our seniors are uh, so uh, talented, and they've given a lot to our church, so they have all received scholarships this year. Um, so I'm going to have each of them share their name, um, who their parents are, because some of them are a lot taller now than they used to be, so we want to make sure you recognize who they are by their parents, um, and then just say uh, what you're planning to do next year, if you would. So name, uh, parents, and what you're doing next year. My name is Misty Lucas. My mom is Debbie Lucas, and I'm going to hopefully be doing a printing course next semester, next year. My name is Samuel Kitchen. My parents are Jeannie and Aubrey Kitchen, and I'll be going to UNCW next year. I'm Tommy Scott. My parents are Lori Joe and Jeff Scott, and I will also be attending UNC Wilmington. Uh, my name is Sam Wills. My parents are Stephanie and Greg Wills, and I will be attending Clemson University next year. Hi, I'm Victoria Tyson. Uh, Pastor John is my dad, and my mom is Elizabeth Tyson, and I'm going to Chapel Hill to study pre-med. Hi, I'm Mary Pat Thompson. My parents are David and Katherine Thompson, and next year I'll be attending the new school in New York City. All right, so we have a tradition of giving our seniors these senior books, and they're filled with notes from some of you all, from some of our youth, and just some tidbits of things that would be helpful, we think, as you're leaving this place and as we're 
blessing you and sending you off uh, because all of you are going to be leaving home uh, in the next couple of months. So uh, we want to give you a little bit of ourselves to take with you. So I'll hand these out, and then Pastor John, if you could come up, and we will pray for these seniors. You want to extend a hand of blessing towards these folks? Lord Jesus, we pray that you surround these young people with your grace and with your power. We pray that you give them wisdom and discernment, and we pray that you cause them to rejoice in all the good things that you've made possible for them. We pray that you will cause them to be a shining light for you where they go. And we pray that they'll make good friends. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations to you. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Congratulations. We come now to um, the offering, and I'm going to make a logical connection between what we just did and what we're about to do. It's because of your generous offerings that we're able to have such a vibrant ministry to young people. Uh, young people right here in our area, but also up and down the beach and reaching all the way across to Rwanda. So thank you for your generous gifts. If the ushers will come forward, we'll receive the morning tithes and offerings.
I'm going to cheat and read a little extra scripture to you, okay? Uh, the, the first scripture uh, is from Acts chapter 1, and this is the, um, the scene where Jesus is about to ascend into heaven. And so he's gathered his disciples around him, and this is kind of the last time that he is going to appear in his resurrection body to these folks. And um, there's a certain point that I'm going to want to bring up to you in a minute. And then after I finish that, then I want to read to you about the day of Pentecost. You know, the day of Pentecost is the day that the Holy Spirit came upon uh, those disciples. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you've heard from me. For John baptized with water... But you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus replied, It's not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Fast forward a few days to Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Now, this next couple of sentences is why I went to seminary. You ready? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. So, the disciples have been with Jesus. They've seen him crucified. They've seen him resurrected. 
He's appeared to them over a period of 40 days, right? And then he gathers them all together on the Mount of Transfiguration. And he says to them, okay, guys, not many days from now, you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. John baptized you with water, but you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And they said, what? Oh, oh, great. Is this the time that you're going to restore Israel to its former glory? Really? Jesus is like, none of your business. You know, that, that, that's sort of the, what we have in the Bible is the nice version of none of your business. Jesus says, it's not for you to know the times and seasons that God has appointed. None of your business. Did Jesus say to them, okay, now everybody, I want you to get ready. I'm about to restore the kingdom. Is that what Jesus said to them? No, that's not what Jesus said to them at all. Jesus said, I want you to wait right here in Jerusalem. And not many days from now, you're going to be filled with power from on high. Not many days from now, you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So wait, watch, and pray, and get ready. Were they drinking that in? Absolutely not. They were impervious to what Jesus had said. Impervious. What Jesus is talking about is rolling off them like water off a duck's back because they got an agenda. They have an agenda. They have had agenda from the very beginning that they began to figure out that Jesus was the Messiah. They were like, oh, oh, I know how this goes. Oh, this is going to be so cool. This is going to be tremendous. And so see, they're remembering back a thousand years they're and you think Southerners have a long memory, right? Yeah. They're remembering back a thousand years back to when Israel was the greatest nation on earth. At that time, Israel was the greatest nation on earth. And they're like, you know, we know that the Messiah is going to come. And when he comes, he's going to restore everything. And so... You're the Messiah. We figured out you're the Messiah, and so you're going to restore everything. And they've got these visions of Jerusalem, the palace in Jerusalem, the throne in the palace. And who's sitting on the throne in the palace in Jerusalem? Jesus. And who's on his left and on his right? The disciples. We're there in the throne room with Jesus, and we're going to have wealth and honor and power and glory, and Jesus is going to be the king, and we're going to be on his left and on his right. And then it's going to spread from Jerusalem out to the outermost parts of the world until Jesus is going to be eclipsing even the power and the glory of Caesar in Rome. And that is what their minds were filled with. They had an agenda for God that was complete. And of course, they thought it was God-given. Because see, they, they had already figured out that Jesus is the Messiah. And so it's like, they really couldn't hear much from there. They had an agenda for God. They had an agenda for God. They had a to-do list for God. God, here's my agenda for you. God, here's my to-do list for you. God, are you doing what I asked you to do? God, are you doing what I need you to do? God, are you fulfilling my vision for my life? God, if you're not fulfilling my needs, what are you there for? God, if you're not fulfilling my agenda, what are you there for? Why am I loving you? Why am I serving you? Why am I praying? Why am I attending church? Why am I giving my money? If you're not going to fulfill my agenda 
for you. What are you there for? What good is a relationship with you if you're not going to fulfill my agenda? And God's like, guess what, boys? You got it backwards. I'm not here to fulfill your agenda. You see, here's, here, here's the thing that you missed. You're not the center of the universe. I am. Yeah, you're not the center of the universe. I am. I don't fulfill your agenda, but you may fulfill mine, if you wish. You don't have to, but if you want to, I'll let you in on it, and you can have my agenda fulfilled in you and in your life, if that's what you want. That's a great reversal. We get to the moment of Jesus' ascension into heaven when he says to them, I want you to wait right here in Jerusalem. Don't go running out doing anything. Wait, wait, pray until you receive an agenda from me. Wait until you receive power from on high. Wait until you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. You know what the word baptism means, right? It means literally. Greek word baptizo means immersed. Okay? So when Jesus is saying you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, he's saying you're going to be immersed in the Holy Spirit. Do you have a sponge uh, on your sink at home? Anybody have a sponge on, on your sink at home? Anybody have sponges? If you got a sponge at your house, raise your hand. I'm just trying to get audience participation here. Okay, yeah. Okay, you got a sponge at your house. You know the deal. If, if you pull out that sponge and without immersing it, you try to use it, is that going to work? Like, not at all. Yeah, you get out that sponge before you immerse it, and it's, if it's like at my house, it's not perfectly, like, straight. It's sort of curved, and uh, it's really hard. And so you, you, you can't clean any surfaces with it because it's not flat against the surface. It's not pliable, and um, it's not absorbent at all because it's, like, hard. In order to make that sponge work, you, you first have to uh, wet it, Right? You've got to get enough water on that sponge so it can soak it up. That sponge has to get immersed in water to work. And then the sponge sort of soaks up the water. And then all of a sudden, it's useful. All of a sudden, it's pliable. All of a sudden, you can use that sponge for what you want to use it for, but not before you immerse it in water. We're kind of that way. We have huge capabilities, seniors. We have huge capabilities. But until we're immersed in God's power and God's agenda, we're not all that useful. Until we're immersed in God's power and God's agenda, we're functioning at just a small percentage of what he's created us to do and to be. The disciples didn't realize that they weren't interested in God's agenda. <coughs> but they weren't. They were interested in their own agenda. They had already figured out what God was supposed to do, and they kept trying to push this to happen. And finally, Jesus has to say to them, mind your own business. Like, stop trying to push your agenda and receive the agenda that God has for you. When the disciples were able to do that, then they were able to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden what happens is 
we're not telling God what he needs to be doing, but God's telling us what we need to be doing. And not only is he telling us what we need to be doing, he's empowering us to do it. And he's going to ask us to do things that are really in keeping with our capabilities, but which are also a little frightening and a stretch. Seniors, I want to say to you as you go off to college, uh, there's um, some fear that some people have. Oh, if I'm really a Christian, I can't have any fun. Well, I, I want you to look again at Jesus in the Gospels. Jesus is having an awful lot of fun in the Gospels. He's invited to parties, and when the wine runs out, he makes some more. I'm assuming he and his disciples were of age, unlike you, and that, you know, they were participating in the party. Uh, Jesus is having a wonderful, exciting, fully orbed life. And when we're followers of Jesus filled with his spirit, we have the most exciting, adventuresome, fully orbed life that's possible. And I want to commend to you that possibility as you launch from Duck Church and from your homes uh, to where you're going, that you consider trading in your agenda for God's agenda. When we trade in our agenda for God's agenda, we become empowered for miraculous things to happen. So these disciples, like, they receive the Holy Spirit, and it's the greatest thing. They each become multimillionaires. They each, like, build a palace on the Sea of Tiberias. It's just terrific. They have Mercedes camels to drive. It's, it's the most stupendous thing. I mean, you talk about the health and wealth gospel. Like, they, they've got it all. Oh, no, that's not the way that worked, is it? Yeah, no, they did not become multimillionaires. Uh, and they did not build palaces on the Sea of Tiberias. What they did was change the world. That's what they did. They changed the world. If these men and women had not done what they did, we probably would not be here today. People all over the world today that are worshiping Jesus probably would not be. But because they did God's agenda, the world was changed. And that has happened generation after generation after generation. You realize that if one generation fails, the mission stops. There's not a plan B. That's it. So I don't know, graduates, whether it's God's will for you to become multimillionaires. It really may be. I don't know if it's God's will for you to build a palace by the water. It really may be. But this I do know. Whatever God has created you for, when you say to him, Lord, let's do it your way, your heart's going to sing and your life is going to fit who you are. And that's going to feel good. And you're going to make the difference that God created you to make. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
into a, a time of prayer. Lord, as we bow our hearts before you, we realize that we're not really good at abandoning our agenda and embracing yours. We're going to need your grace and your help to do that. But right now, Lord, a lot of us are saying to you in our hearts, I want to do it your way. Forgive me when I mess that up, and then give me the strength to start over doing it your way. We make these prayers in the name of Jesus who taught us to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You remember that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, the night that he knew that he would soon be suffering, the night that he knew that he would soon be offering his life in agony on the cross for the sins of the world, you remember that on that night he took good bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples after he blessed it, in the midst of his suffering, he offered blessing to God and blessing to his friends. He took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. And then after the supper, he took a cup of wine and he gave thanks as he said, this is my blood that's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. He gave thanks as he poured out his blood for God's agenda, God's will, and the benefit of those whom he loves. Let's pray. Lord, we pray that you bless this bread and this wine, that you make it become for us the body and blood of Christ, and that you make us become your body for all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let those who will assist with the communion come forward. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ poured out for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ shed for you. We're going to commune today by coming down the center aisle with one hand on top of another like sinners begging for the grace of God because that's what all of us are. Uh, you'll hear the words, the body of Christ broken for you, and you'll say amen or thanks be to God. Then you'll go to the cup, you'll hear the words, the blood of Christ shed for you, and you'll say amen 
or thanks be to God. As you return to the, your seat by the side aisle, I invite you to sing, to enjoy the music that's playing, uh, to pray, to meditate, to be filled with the grace, the power, and purpose of God. And if you need gluten-free bread, just say so, we have. Holy Spirit, 
we invite you into our hearts this morning. And we say with all the courage that we can muster that we're putting aside our ways and we're welcoming your agenda in our lives. God, cast out all fear that's in our hearts and give us what we need to continue to follow you for the rest of our days. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Let's stand and sing. are able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the throne of grace. 
unto the only wise God be honor, glory, dominion, and power, and may the love of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. You love them fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on